So in this video, we are going to build on the ideas that we learned in the previous videos with exact equations. So let's say that we have an arbitrary differential equation that is in the form of an exact equation like this. And typically what we would do is we would check if m sub y is equal to n sub x. And if that's true, then that means that this equation is an exact equation and that we can proceed with the methods that we learned in the previous videos. However, what if m sub y is not equal to n sub x? Then in this case, our differential equation would not be exact. But we can make use of a strategy in order to turn this differential equation into an exact equation if m sub y does not equal n sub x. And the way that we're going to do that is by using our old friend integrating factor. So what we're going to do in the next step is we're going to derive an expression for our integrating factor mu. Just like we derived an expression for the integrating factor of a differential equation of the form y prime plus a of x y is equal to b of x. We derived an integrating factor for this kind of equation that looks something like uh, this, right? But now we're dealing with a whole entire different form, so we can't use this integrating factor. We're gonna to have to derive a new one. So the whole entire point of an integrating factor is to be able to multiply through the entire equation and then turn it into an exact equation. So when I multiply through by mu, what I get is mu times m of xy plus mu times n of xy times y prime is equal to zero. So in order for this equation to satisfy the exact criteria, what we want to do is we want this differentiated with respect to y equal to this differentiated with respect to x. So the way I'm going to write that is d dy of mu times m of xy has to equal d dx of mu times n of xy. Now in order to apply these differentiation operators, we need to determine what mu is a function of. So there's going to be two cases. We're going to consider the case where mu is a function of x and when mu is a function of y. For simplicity, we do not want mu to be a function of both x and y. We want it to be either one or the other. It'll make our computations much easier. Okay, so for the first case, case one, we're going to assume mu is a function of x. So therefore, d dy of mu of x times m of x, y, has to equal d dx of mu of x times n of x, y. So let's start with this left side, and what we get is we get mu times dm dy. I'm just dropping the... Uh, the parentheses, the of x, of x, y, because we already know what they are a function of now. And on the right side, what we get, uh, so the right side, since we're differentiating with respect to x, we have to use the product rule of differentiation. So what we get is, uh, let's differentiate mu first. So we get d mu dx times n plus dn dx times mu. And again, this is just the product rule of differentiation. So now let's go ahead and solve for mu. So I'm gonna bring this, this term right here over to the left side. So I get mu dm dy minus dn dx times mu. And this is equal to d mu dx times n. So I can factor out an, a mu on the left side and I get I'm gonna write it as m sub y. This just means uh, m differentiated with respect to y. Minus n sub x, same idea, is equal to d mu dx times n. So let's move mu over to the d mu and the dx and n over to the left-hand side. And what we get is m sub y minus n sub x all over n times dx. And this is going to be equal to d mu over mu. So this is the separable difference equation that we are going to be solving in order to derive an expression for our integrating factor mu. So we go ahead and integrate both sides. This right hand side comes out to be the natural log of mu. And uh, so if we take the exponential of both sides after that, then what we get is an expression for our integrating factor, 
which again is only a function of x since that is what we assumed. And it's going to be equal to the exponential of the integral of m sub y minus n sub x all over n dx. So this is the integrating factor we are going to be using in order to turn a non-exact equation into an exact equation if we assume that our integrating factor is going to be a function of x. Okay, so now we're going to look at case two where we have mu as a function of y. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate this line in order to solve for mu. So we have d dy of mu of y times m of xy. And this has to be equal to d dx of mu of y times n of xy. And again, these have to be equal to each other because we want the equation to be an exact equation. So on the left-hand side, we're going to have to use the product rule of differentiation. So what we get is we get d mu dy times m plus mu times dm dy. And this has to equal the right-hand side. Um, since we're differentiating with respect to x and mu is only a function of y, we treat mu of y as a constant. So what we get is we get mu times dn dx. And from here, we just do the same thing that we did before. Let's go ahead and solve for mu. So what we get is mu times n sub x minus m sub y all over m. And this is going to be equal to d mu dy. So in this step, all I did is I brought uh, mu dm dy over to the right hand side by subtracting it and then dividing by m. So this gives us a separable differential equation that we can separate into d mu over mu is equal to n sub x minus m sub y over m dx. And from here, we just straight up integrate we get the natural log of mu on the left hand side and we take the exponentials of both sides. So what we end up with is mu is equal to e to the integral of n sub x minus m sub y over m dx. So this is going to be our other integrating factor that we could use if we want mu to only be a function of y. So this is for mu when mu is a function of y. So let's go ahead and back up just to put things into perspective. Um, so let's say that I have a differential equation of this form right here. Uh, the first thing that I would probably do is test to see whether it is exact or not to make sure that I can actually solve this problem. And I would do that by testing if m differentiated with respect to y is equal to n differentiated with respect to x. Again, this is just like testing whether the mixed partials are equal to each other. If you need more information on this, just go ahead and watch my previous couple videos. But anyway, what we do is we test this criteria in order to determine whether or not our equation is exact. But let's say that m sub y is not equal to n sub x. Therefore, our equation is not exact. Then what we can do is we can multiply through the entire equation by an integrating factor, the ones that we just derived, in order to turn this equation into an exact equation so that we can solve it. So the two integrating factors that we can choose from to do this are mu of x is equal to the exponential of the integral of m differentiated with respect to y minus n differentiated with respect to x all over n dx. Or we can choose an integrating factor that is a function of y, in which case would be e to the integral of n sub x minus m sub y all over m times dy. And then we go ahead and multiply through our equation by mu, which will give us mu times m plus mu times n y prime is equal to zero. And now what we have is an exact equation that we can solve just like we did before. So the question that you may ask yourself is, what integrating factor do I pick? Well, typically, the integrating factor that you will pick is going to be the one that has the easiest integral to deal with. So if m sub y minus n sub x over n is easier to integrate than n sub x minus m sub y over m, then I'll go ahead and choose this guy. Or if that integral is more difficult, then I would choose this guy. 
So really, it doesn't matter, but it is strategic to pick the integrating factor that will make your life a lot more easier. So anyway, that's the introduction to integrating factors with exact equations. And in the next video, I'm going to work through an example demonstrating how uh, all of this comes together. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.